Welcome to the Complete Story Series from Manga Story. My name is Benny and we're about to cover Volume 1 of Berserk. All alterations to the panels, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. A one-eyed man in black begins to travel, and he walks until he finds a castle. He makes his way there, passing the townspeople and beggars, and as he continues, he notices a caged carriage pass by with women and children. Inside one of the local taverns, a group of men start to throw knives at a tied-up elf. The larger man tells the elf to quit struggling. He's making it hard for them to hit him! As the men continue to throw knives at the elf, the man in black walks into the tavern, then walks over to the bar, and he tells them that he's gonna mess up this place a little, and he pulls a small crossbow out. The elf demands that the men untie him. If not, he'll just chew through his restraints. But the large man says that he'll just have to shut up now and try not to struggle anymore. But before the man can throw another knife, an arrow flies, piercing the large man's head and then sticking him to the wall. The group of men then ask, who shot that arrow? And then the crossbow begins to shoot again, but this time, a lot more arrows. And the arrows begin to hit the men in the eyes and the neck until all but one stands. The man in black stands up and he loads one more arrow, and then he fires it hitting the last man through the nose. The last man falls to the ground and the man in black walks over to him and grabs him by the arrow, asking if he was one of the robbers at Coca Castle. And the man says, yes. The man in black tells him, good. I need you to relay a message to your master for me. Tell him the black swordsman has come. The elf begins to call out from behind him, and the man in black grabs the hilt of his sword and he pulls out a MASSIVE GREAT SWORD! Behind him, the man appears to stab him, but with one powerful downward swing, the man in black cuts the man in half, sending the severed body flying and blood spurting everywhere! Everyone watches in shock as the upper half is flung into the crowd of people, and the man puts his sword back. The thing is too big to be called a sword. Too thick, too heavy, too rough. It's more like a large chunk of iron. The man in black looks at the robber and he tells him, I'm counting on you. And then he begins to leave. As he gets outside, the elf flies after him, telling him to wait, wait! If he's going to save someone, he should have at least followed through and make sure he's okay. And by the way, that is an amazing sword. How much does it weigh? The man doesn't answer and he continues walking and the elf tells him, My name's Puck and it's nice to meet you. He was with a group of traveling performers when those robbers attacked them. Puck flies over and he sits on the man's shoulder to continue to talk. And the man in black swats him away, telling Puck, Do not touch me. Puck tries to yell at the man and he hears a voice. And then he looks behind him and he sees the soldier starting to surround him. Puck begins to fly off and he tells him, Well, I better be going now. And a short while later, the man is strung up in a dungeon bloodied from being tortured. The torturer rolls his whip up and he asks the man if he can make some noise. Because without him showing any pain, this isn't very fun. As the torturer leans in, the man spits blood back in his face. And the torturer gets ready for another whipping, but then he's told to stop. The mayor walks in and he looks at the pile of weapons that were taken from the man. And he asks, you a mercenary? The man doesn't respond, and the mayor tells him, You did something terrible. Those men that you killed will most likely have the whole town destroyed. The man looks at the soldiers escorting the mayor, and he asks them, Are they that worthless? But before one of the soldiers can hit him, the mayor says that he doesn't know how terrifying the master of those bandits is. He, rather it, is not human. It's something more frightening. There is no human capable of killing him. The man tells him that he knows. That monster eats humans. I know it very well. I also know that you send a food to him. The mayor tries to defend himself, but the man tells him that it sounds like you're just trying to protect yourself, not so much your townspeople. The mayor falls to his knees in pain, having some kind of a heart attack, and he tells the torturer to do whatever he wants to him. Just don't let him die. When you're done, he'll hand him over to the men at Coca Castle later. Later, the robber from before heads back to Coca Castle to report on the black swordsman who attacked them. He had a sword taller than him, and he sliced their men in one swing. He also had a mechanical hand, a very suspicious looking man. The Baron continues to eat his meal, thinking, that man, could it be him? Soon a guard enters, telling them the town mayor is here requesting to meet with them regarding the recent incident. The mayor walks in begging for forgiveness, and the Baron continues cutting his food, stating that he's not sure on the exact details, but this was the work of a wandering stranger. It has nothing to do with the mayor and his town. The mayor says that he'll double the food and the money, so please, and then the Baron picks up a piece of his food, and he flings it over at the mayor. When the mayor looks down, he sees that it's an ear. The Baron begins to stand up, stating that he doesn't care about all of that. He just likes to see humans running in the midst of great flames, and the sound of bones being crushed. The guards grab the Baron and they begin to drag him off, and the Mayor tries to call out to the Baron, but the Baron doesn't answer, and he continues to think about the Black Swordsman. Over in a cell, the man in black lays on the floor, unable to move from all of his wounds. But laying there, he looks over at the makeshift bed and he sees a disfigured creature. He looks at it and he says, You again. The creature starts to crawl towards him. The man yells back at it, telling it, Stay back! Stay back! But soon, it's interrupted by the sound of gargling water. 
Puck appears with a key ring, asking what was all the yelling for? You made me fall in the water. Wait, why is this water yellowish? The man looks towards the creature, but he sees that it's gone, and he looks back at Puck, asking why he's here. Puck says that he's here to do a good deed. And with these wounds, as Puck reaches down to touch the wounds, the man yells at him, Do not touch me! Puck tells him, Jeez, I won't hurt you, just watch! And he reaches out over the wounds. Soon the pain begins to fade and the wounds begin to heal. Puck looks back at him, telling him that elves have different powers. They can heal injuries, sense people's feelings, and some even say they have the power to bring happiness. Puck then asks the man his name, and the man tells him, Guts. As Puck continues to heal Guts, he also notices a strange marking on his neck, and he asks, what's that for? Guts swats him away and gets up telling him, it's the brand. And Puck has no idea what he's talking about. Guts tells him that the man is going to come and kill him and burn this town to the ground. And Puck begins to argue that he would be involving the townspeople if he stays to fight him. But Guts says that whatever happens to them will just happen. I'm only interested in killing that man. People who get caught up in others' battles are fools who lack the strength to really live. Puck then asks, what about me? Why did you save me? And Guts just begins to laugh, asking, who would save a little insect like you? Puck flies up and he hits Guts in the chin and Guts yells, why'd you do that? And Puck just looks back angry and flies away. Guts sits back down in his cell, looking at the keys that Puck left and he starts to scratch at his own skin, causing himself to bleed. Then the brand begins to bleed as he smears the blood on it. He licks the blood, stating that this is what he's been waiting for. Later outside, the Baron and his men begin to storm through the city, killing everyone on their path while the Baron drinks the blood of his victims. As the men continue to ride, they come across a pile of bodies, but one of the men notices something. When he looks closer, he sees a man stand up from the pile, and that man is Guts. He loads up his crossbow and he begins to fire at all the men on the horses. The arrows begin to hit the men on their neck and eyes, and Guts continues firing more and more. One of the men gets behind Guts and starts to charge at him, so Guts grabs the hilt of his sword, and in one pound powerful swing and cuts both the man and the horse into pieces. Above the fight, Puck watches the Baron as he makes his way to the front of the group and he stares at Guts asking, are you the black swordsman who's been hunting us apostles? Guts drops his sword and he grabs a handful of arrows and he starts to reload. And the Baron tells him, no human has any hope of defeating me. And he begins to charge towards Guts. Guts starts firing the arrows, hitting the Baron with so many arrows that he falls off his horse. As the Baron starts to get up, Guts reloads and launches more arrows, knocking the Baron into a building. He then reloads again and he starts to walk through the doorway that the Baron flew into. And when he steps in, a giant tail swings out, knocking Guts away. Through the doorway, the Baron's face appears, telling Guts, it's impossible for a human to kill me. And when he steps out, he reveals himself to be a giant snake-like beast. The Baron makes his way towards Guts, and he begins knocking him around with his tail, throwing him into buildings. The beatings continue until Guts stops moving, and the Baron picks him up by the arm, telling him, Humans are worthless. You're only good as food. But as he gets ready to swallow Guts, Guts holds out his mechanical arm, and then he pulls a string with his teeth. The fist drops down, revealing a cannon in his arm, and he fires, blowing away half of the Baron's head. Once on the ground, Guts grabs his sword and he swings once, cutting the Baron in half. He then falls over from that swing, spitting up blood, and as he gets back up, he's smiling. He begins to reload his crossbow, telling him, It's true. Humans are weak, but no matter how weak, we still want to live. And then he begins shooting the Baron repeatedly. The Baron looks up and he sees Guts' neck, and he sees that he has the sacrificial brand. Guts asks him, Where are the remaining five members of God Hand? And the Baron tells him, he doesn't know. I'm not permitted to enter. Guts tells him, enjoy your slow death. And he begins to walk away as the flames of the city start burning the building that the Baron is in, forcing it to begin to crumble and fall on him. The Baron screams for him to save him, but Guts continues to walk and he puts his sword away. Puck watches as Guts walks through the burning city, and the only thing that he can say is, Berserk. Guts makes his way out of the town and he begins to walk with Puck following closely behind. But as Puck begins to sit on a branch that breaks, he falls in front of Guts who begins to hold his mechanical arm in pain. Puck begins to ask what happened because he looks pretty beat up, but Guts grabs him by the wings and asks him, why are you even here? Puck tells him that it's because he's pretty interesting, kind of like a monster or something, so hanging out with him, Puck's gonna get to see a lot of cool things. Guts drops him in a puddle and says, I'll be honest, I don't like elves very much. You're weak and weak people irritate me. Guts begins to walk off, leaving Puck, and Puck tries to stomp him, but doesn't have any luck. As he continues down the road, it begins to rain, and Guts is stopped by a passerby and his daughter, asking if he needs a ride. Guts tells him, no, for your sake, I'm being pursued by evil spirits. The man tells him that that's the first time he's heard that, but they have a lucky spirit themselves. And when Guts looks back, he sees Puck making a face behind the little girl's head. Guts thinks to himself, why not just go with them? It's not his concern what happens to them. After a bit of traveling, the man asks what the giant thing behind him is. Is that a sword? 
Gus tells him something like that. And the man tells him how he looks like a mercenary. He has a nephew who decided to be a mercenary, but five years ago he was killed and he became just another nameless soldier. Guts asks, what's wrong with that? He died doing what he wanted. We all die someday. Why not die in the glory of battle? The carriage goes silent and Guts tells everyone, sorry, can you just let me sleep? Soon Guts falls asleep and he begins to dream, but in his dream, he walks down a narrow path with a giant eye looking at him. As he walks, his brain begins to bleed and he hears a voice telling him that he can't escape. Listening to the voice, Guts doesn't look where he steps and he ends up stepping on a spike going right through his foot. He tries to pull his foot out, but then he hears a voice again telling him that he cannot escape and he looks back to see the giant disfigured creatures getting bigger and closer. Guts begins to scream and then he wakes up to a creature trying to latch onto his face. He pulls out a dagger and he stabs it, throwing it to the side. Everyone starts to get up asking, what was that? And Guts tells him, it's an incubus. And then he thinks to himself how they won't even let him sleep now. Puck asks, why would they come? And Guts points to his brand and says, this summons them. He then puts his hand on it as he begins to feel it bleeding again. Guts jumps out of the carriage telling everyone not to follow him. The incubi are born from hatred mixing with the spilled blood of dead humans, which means there are corpses around here. The horses begin to get scared and the daughter jumps down trying to calm him. Guts tells her not to follow him, but it's too late. A spear shoots out of the ground, going through her chest. The man calls out to his daughter, but then all around them, the corpses begin to rise and surround them. Guts looks at the little girl, and then he grins, throwing knives at the skeletons, breaking their skulls. Puck says it's pointless, they're all dead already. And Guts tells him, you can leave if you'd like, but I'm staying. He then grabs his sword and he slashes upwards, cutting through several bodies. Guts readies himself and he begins to charge right into the middle of the group, swinging his sword, destroying everything in his path. Puck watches from the carriage, but then he hears something. He calls out to Guts, and when Guts looks over, he sees the little girl standing there, holding the severed head of her father. The little girl tosses the head to the side and jumps down, making her way towards Guts. Once she gets over to him, Guts looks down to see that she stabbed him. A moment later, Guts swings, and the top half of the little girl's body launches across the forest. The corpses begin to gather up, but something's wrong with Guts, and as he swings his sword, he begins to cough up something. The corpses try to attack Guts, but he just grabs his sword tighter and he slashes his way through the giant crowd. Bodies begin to fly in every direction. Guts continues to fight until finally there are no more bodies, and he looks down at the little girl. Puck tells him it wasn't his fault, and Guts begins to laugh, telling him, that's right. I told you people die in other people's battles. They didn't have the power to protect themselves from this destruction. That's all there is to it. But the forest goes silent and Guts looks up. The two begin to hear voices telling Guts that he cannot escape them. As long as he has that brand, he cannot escape. No matter where he goes, anger, sadness, pain, all of it. Guts begins to shout for them to shut up, holding his mechanical arm up. The fist drops down and he falls to his knees, firing the cannon. And then the voices stop. Guts stands back up and he begins to walk. And Puck looks around at all of the dead bodies and he thinks to himself, this is Guts' world. Guts continues to travel until he finds himself in another town with townspeople crowding around something. The people are having a public execution for a woman that is suspected of heresy and the woman is being beheaded. The head rolls off the platform and Guts reaches down and picks up the head and looks at it. A little boy is shouting that that was his sister, tries to fight his way through the crowd, but a guard knocks him down, telling him anyone under suspicion will be killed. Children are no exception. The guard walks over to Guts and asks him to hand over the head, but Guts just looks at him and spits in his face. He then turns his back to the guard and throws the head towards the Count who has been watching over the execution. The Count catches the head while Guts punches and kills the guard. And then while holding the head, the Count sees the brand on her forehead. The Count looks down at Guts and Guts takes his finger and touches his brand. And he draws a small line from one end of his neck to the other with blood. Then he walks away. Guards are sent after him, but the Count sits back stating that that was the Black Swordsman and he just declared war. The Count begins to squeeze the head tighter and tighter until it pops and then begins to laugh. During the execution, a hooded figure walks off while Guts starts to run through the city. But before long, the guards surround him. Two guards walk over to him, telling him not to resist. But Guts reaches to grab his sword and swings it across, cutting the guards in half. Soon the guards start to charge in, but Guts starts cutting them down with his massive swings. The archers prepare themselves to fire down on Guts, but before they can, a blinding light flashes in front of them, and then down below, the light flies towards Guts, shouting, See? I saved you, didn't I? Puck tells him, you owe me now. And then he's grabbed by a guard. A second later, the guard's hands are cut off and Guts tells him, there you go. The guards begin to stop attacking and soon their captain, Zon Dark, appears. The man towers over Guts telling him, you've got a big sword for such a little boy. And Guts says nothing. Zon goes on to tell him, that that is an impressive sword, would you mind me testing my pickaxe on it? And he begins to swing downward. The strike lands between Guts' legs and he doesn't even move. 
Zahn begins to swing side to side, hitting his own men, and then he swings down once more, hitting the wall behind Guts, telling him that he has nowhere to run. Zahn readies one more swing, but this time, Guts readies himself. As the pickaxe comes down, Guts swings his sword into the path of the pickaxe, deflecting and breaking it, causing the broken pieces to fly right back into Zahn's face. Guts then steps on Zahn's head, kicking him to the side, all the while the hooded figure from before is watching. Guts thinks that this may not end anytime soon, and then he throws smoke bombs to get away. But the hooded figure calls out to him, follow me if you want to escape. Guts follows the man as soon they walk down an alley and he tells Guts how everyone in this town is on alert because people are afraid of being arrested for suspicion. As they walk into the man's home, Guts notices all of the jars are filled with specimen, and he asked if he was afraid that he would be suspected himself. The man tells him, not really, these are all ordinary doctor's odds and ends. And then he tells Guts that he saw him at the execution today. Does he maybe have something against the court? Maybe revenge? Guts looks down at the man and kicks his walking stick out from his hand, telling him, I'll be asking the questions. But as the man begins to stand back up, he tells Guts that he wants him to kill the count for him. And once he stands, the man shows that he has two peg legs and part of his face missing. The Count shaved and cut away at him, consuming his flesh, but he knows it's a difficult story to believe. And Guts tells him, Actually, I believe you. Rather, I know what he is. The man begins to laugh and tells him that there's something he wants to show him. And then he turns and pulls down a jaw hanging on the wall, and a secret door begins to reveal a passage. The two men walk into the room, and Guts looks at an egg-shaped thing, and his eyes widen. Guts says, This is Behelet! And that is the conclusion of Volume 1 of Berserk. Now, we need you guys to tell us if you want more of this story, because we're trying out a bunch of mangas, we have multiple things rolling at once. Give this video a like if you want more, and subscribe to the channel if you want to keep finding out what happened in the Berserk manga. I'm Benny from Manga Story, and follow us on Twitter at Manga Story, and I'll see you next time right here.